In the 1960s, a NASA probe called Ranger sent back stunning close-up photos of the moon, some of the first the world had ever seen. And it was one of almost 100 moon missions launched during the space race, sending back amazing images along the way. How do these photos taken by NASA in the 60s and 70s compare to what amateur astronomers like me can do today? In this video, I'm going to answer that question by using my own telescope to recreate images taken by the Ranger mission and two other early voyages to the moon. Our goal was to learn some of the history behind lunar exploration, and also to push this telescope to its limits and find out how my photos stack up to those taken by NASA more than 50 years ago, including from one of the Apollo moon landings. Taking great photos of the moon will require a great telescope, and my Celestron C8 is perfect for the job. It's one of the most popular amateur telescopes of all time. It has the power to go close up on the moon, and its 8-inch mirror means that we will get plenty of detail. On the back of the scope, I'll attach my ZWO camera, a low-noise, high-quality, and surprisingly affordable astronomy camera. I know that this setup works, because I've used it before to get sharp photos of Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, and other areas of the moon. Now it's time to push it to its limits, starting by recreating this image from the Ranger 7 mission. The mission of the Block 3 Ranger flights was to obtain television pictures of the small-scale topography in selected areas of the lunar surface, which would benefit science and the manned lunar program. This was a time when we didn't know what the moon was like close up. Sure, we could look at it with telescopes from here on Earth, but we weren't totally sure what the surface was actually like, or that we could land something on it and have people get out and walk around. So these Ranger missions were crucial to understanding that. By crashing them into the moon, they were able to send back pictures as they got closer and closer to impact. And this Ranger 7 mission in 1964 was NASA's first successful one, and it gave America our first close-up images of the moon. First, it's time to get the telescope set up. With the clear night in the forecast, this is the perfect opportunity to go head-to-head -head in an astrophotography shootout between my telescope and vintage NASA. After pointing it at the moon and getting focused, I aim towards this area of the lunar surface and locate the same set of craters imaged by the Ranger probe in 1964, seen here at a slightly different angle. We're seeing the exact same area of the moon as the Ranger 7 probe as it was barreling towards impact, with NASA, the whole country, and really people all around the world eagerly awaiting the results. To learn more about the surface of the moon, to see if it will be safe and possible to send people there. Now it's time to start imaging. After using software to pick out only the best frames, I got this final image. The dark, smooth areas are parts of the lunar mares, or seas, which are believed to have been formed by ancient lava flows. In other spots, the craters are proof of massive meteor impacts in the past. This one is almost 70 miles wide. I think my telescope has done a pretty good job here, but the night is just getting started. It's time to recreate another NASA image, this time from NASA's Lunar Orbiter 4 mission in 1967. The Lunar Orbiter program was a series of five satellites that went into orbit around the moon. Instead of crashing into the surface, they were able to stay there and operate for longer, giving us even more images. All of them were a total success, and they scouted out about 20 potential Apollo landing sites and mapped over 99% of the lunar surface. This photo we're recreating tonight comes from the fourth Lunar Orbiter mission in 1967. We're headed to the northeastern section of the face of the moon. Remember, the goal of this spacecraft was to get a closer look at possible locations for Apollo landing sites. And if this looks familiar, it's because we're in the Sea of Tranquility, the landing site of Apollo 11 just a few years after this photo was taken. This means that we're not only recreating this photo from the Lunar Orbiter probe, looking at where Apollo 11 landed. Somewhere in one of these pixels is what's left of the lunar lander, the American flag, and even the footprints left behind on the lunar surface by Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. To give you a sense of scale, these two craters are about 20 miles across each. The landing site of Apollo 11 is right here. With the help of this image taken by the Lunar Orbiter probe a few years earlier, NASA identified this as a great spot for Apollo 11 because it's a flat, smooth area to make sticking a landing easier. And just to the east of the landing site is a crater that was later named after Neil Armstrong himself. The NASA image was taken when the probe was about 1,500 miles away from the moon, over 150 times closer 
than I am from right here on Earth. And incredibly, my telescope is just as zoomed in as the Lunar Orbiter spacecraft. And we captured almost as much detail as the NASA photo. This wouldn't be possible without the advances in camera technology that amateur astronomers like me can take advantage of today. My camera is definitely better than what NASA had available for their spacecraft back in the 1960s. And I think this is the best lunar close-up shot that I've ever taken. Let's move on to the third and final NASA image we're going to recreate. This photo wasn't taken by a satellite, but rather by an Apollo mission to the moon. It's from Apollo 16, NASA's fifth moon landing in 1972. John Young, Charlie Duke, and Ken Mattingly went on a 10-day voyage, with Young and Duke spending three days on the lunar surface. Oh, Ryan, you finally here, Houston. They went on three moonwalks, driving around the lunar rover, taking samples, and conducting all sorts of experiments. Boy, Houston, the beauty of this place is just absolutely incredible. This photo comes from the command module that stayed in lunar orbit. It features a massive crater called Theophilus, and it's on the eastern side of the moon, a few hundred miles from where Apollo 16 landed. It's over 60 miles wide, and it covers up the edge of the crater next to it, telling us that it formed more recently. Next, I point my telescope at this crater. We're seeing the same view as the crew of Apollo 16. To be able to do that with a backyard telescope feels pretty special. The Apollo 16 image is stunning, and being taken close up from lunar orbit gives us a different angle on this crater. But I think my photo holds up really well to NASA's. In my image is the current dividing line between day and night on the moon, which means we get extra contrast and long shadows. Look, for example, at the shadows cast by the triple peaked mountain that's more than a mile high in the middle of the crater. You can really see all of the mountains, ridges, and valleys here. One reason why the NASA image is so good is that the photo wasn't beamed back to Earth like the other ones were. The camera that captured this was on the outside of the command module, and on the way back home from the moon, the astronauts went outside on a spacewalk to retrieve the camera's film and have it developed back here on Earth. Not only did Apollo 16 give us amazing images like this, it also continued to push the boundary of human space exploration. And that wraps up an incredible night of astrophotography. These are three of the best moon photos I've ever taken. And I think it really helps to tell the story of the space race and lunar exploration. With the Ranger missions, we were just trying to understand what the moon was actually like, and if it would be safe to land people there. The Lunar Orbiter program was the next step mapping out the lunar surface and scouting out potential Apollo landing sites. Next, NASA sent some robotic landers, before finally moving on to the Apollo program and landing 12 men on the moon. And it's worth mentioning that my photos would have come close to what NASA is doing today. In 2009, a new lunar orbiter was sent to the moon that's quite a big upgrade over what NASA had during the space race. In fact, this photographed two of the missions that we talked about in this video. Here is the impact crater left behind by the Ranger 7 probe when it crashed into the moon after completing its mission. And here's the landing site of Apollo 16, photographed in 2012, showing the bottom half of the lunar lander, foot trails, rover tracks, and even the lunar rover itself. In fact, this satellite is so good, it's even imaged all six Apollo landing sites in incredible detail. And it also won't be long until we get new images of the moon taken by astronauts. About six months after this video is uploaded, Four people will fly around the moon and back on the Artemis II mission, becoming the first people to leave Earth orbit in more than 50 years. And I can't wait to see what photographs they capture. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.